beast of Dartmoor. It's a black leopard. No, no. It's just a sheep. Right, I don't know if you can hear me. Um, I've wanted to do a uh, proper test of the not strong breeze, as in a wind test. And I'm struggling to walk in this. I'm heading up towards Brat Tor. And the reason why I come here is every time I've been here before, no matter what the weather's been like anywhere else, it's always been horrific wind here. And it's not letting, it's not letting me down today. Um, it is showing forecasts of 50 mile an hour winds. Now, I don't have my anemometer with me. I can't find it, to be honest with you. It's only a, uh, a cheap one, it's not that accurate. So, I just have to go by what the Met Office say. But I think I'll be able to gauge anyway. But this is certainly going to be a test to see if the knot strong breeze lives up to its name and can take some decent winds battering it. minutes into the walk. It's knackering me. The wind is brutal. I'm still at ground, ground level at the moment. I've not gone up any elevation. I think I'm going to struggle with this one. Why is it whenever you're walking in the wind, you're always walking into it? Never behind you. Jesus. I'm walking at about half the pace I normally would. This wind is just so brutal. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get right up on the top of Brad's Hall. Don't know if you can hear this. I just have to find somewhere that I can pitch. Jesus. Well, it's not going to rip the tent apart. <laughs> My eyes are streaming. Oh. This is fun. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Apparently. To see if I get blown off these. Bit of respite out of the wind down here. So that's where I'm hoping to go up there, but I'm going to see whether or not I can make it. This is really annoying. I feel okay myself, a little bit out of breath, but I've got a rotten cold coming on. So this is either going to cure it or kill it. But my hips and my knees are absolutely killing me, and I'm about halfway up and the steep bit is yet to come. The wind is just getting ferocious to a point where if I actually can't get up the hill, it's blowing me back. And I think that's what's causing me more problems with my hips and my knees. I've got dodgy knees anyway, so it doesn't help. The, the issue I've got though is there is nowhere halfway up to camp because it's an angle all the way. So there isn't anywhere that is flat enough away from the path that I can pitch up. So I'll keep plugging on. See if I can find somewhere. The things we do for YouTube. So remember at this point, if you like this video, 
hit the thumbs up it doesn't cost you anything uh, helps the channel out massively and if you're not a subscriber obviously hit the subscribe button um, but also you can now donate using the thanks button uh, down by the subscribe button so you can put a donation into the channel and it'll go towards buying new gear and equipment to test out and review for you guys Just so I'm going to put these trekking pole holders on there just to give it some extra stability. I'm not sure this is going to last before I can actually get the outer on it. She's bending. Right, trekking poles. Right, well I made it, I'm inside. Um, that has the, that's got to be the longest and hardest it has ever been for me to put up a tent. Um, now that it's up, I mean there's some flapping but it's holding incredibly well. Bearing in mind, we are definitely hitting sort of 50 mile an hour winds coming through this section up here. It's, it is horrific, at points I couldn't stand up, it was blowing me over when I was putting the tent up. Um, one little concern, that's already annoying me, uh, which I might be able to sort out with a peg, is the, the door here. So, because it's a central zip and the guy out points are there and there, there's nothing to hold that zip. So, when the wind picks up, if you watch, you'll see it start to slowly creep up. And after about five minutes, it's up here somewhere, so. I might have to peg that down, maybe stop it from splitting open. But it's holding up well. I haven't got it up perfect, um, I'll be honest with you. It's hard to get the fly sheet, the seams, in line with the actual poles. Um, when I first put it up, I found that yeah, there was no wind whatsoever the first time I did it. Um, in fact, I did it in the garden the first time, and um, they didn't marry up and it seemed a bit of a pain to try and get the seams level with the uh, <coughs> with the poles and if you don't have the seams level with the poles then i'll show you here you can't get these velcro tabs around them so you can see i've got these here but um oh, they're just about reaching on the other side but this cross should be up here um, and the other end i think is even worse it's miles out so it's not pitched 100 percent but there's no way i'm going to get it any better than this um, obviously the difficulty is, yeah, it seems to be holding well in the wind, and it is horrific wind. Um, it's actually pulled the two pegs out already. In fact, there you go. There's the door on the other side, and you can see already 
but that has split open and my bag's gone rolling out. Because of this central zip. So I'm gonna plug those down with a I'm gonna yeah pin those down with a uh, with an old peg. I brought about 50 pegs with me today, so I knew this thing had loads of guy outlines and I couldn't remember how many. So <coughs> excuse me, I am stinking cold. Um, so I didn't bring the actual pegs that come out with the with the tent because they're just these little shepherd hooks, long shepherd hook crooks. Um, I didn't retrust them. But I'm gonna go now because I'm gonna go and sort that out. I think I'm gonna be in for a fun night tonight. I'm not too sure I'm gonna get much sleep, to be honest with you. Um, the tent's holding up fine. It is getting an absolute hammering, but not having any issues so far, apart from the zips on the doors, which I've managed to peg down now, so I'm hoping that'll hold through the night. Fingers crossed. Um, I'm finding it a bit annoying is that there's a few few little things that annoy me about this tent. One is the the zip. I'm mean, bearing in mind this is designed for strong wind, um, but the zip blows open in the wind because there isn't a tying point at the zip panel, which there should be really. Um, two, there's no storage pockets in here at all. So I've got my wallet, my car keys, a few little bits and pieces that I really need to be putting somewhere safe and there's nowhere for them to go. Um, there's no lantern hook inside here, uh, but there is these loops dotted about everywhere, which are for running a line through, they say is to make it stronger, um, or you could use it as a washing line, but I've had to use a uh, carabiner on my uh, the black dog lantern. So, um, yeah, that's a shame. Um, other than that, I mean, it's not Helleberg. It's not Helleberg money. It's holding up to some horrific wind out there. Um, nothing has budged so far. I've been out a couple of times and just checked everything. All seems okay. One of the pegs actually bent outwards, so it, it wasn't the, um, the tent failing. It was the uh, peg just ripping out of the ground. So maybe some delta pegs. The only problem I've got is on the front, the front pegs that are on this tent. Um, there's a massive slab of granite underneath it and um, I can only get them in a couple of inches and luckily they're not taking the main brunt of the wind so hopefully they'll be alright. So yeah, I've just got my mat up uh, and I'm just chilling out. I've got my um, Flames Creed uh, quilt out of me tonight because the uh, so I think I found the limit of the um, Aegis Max tiny quilt. Uh, it just got too cold last time I used it so I'm back to the uh, the faithful old Flames Creed tonight, so I should be snug and warm with that, and I've still got my Camphy P3 mat. Um, I'm getting another mat that's being sent out to me soon, uh, which I'll test. It's uh, allegedly a winter mat, I'm not too sure. Um, it's got a very high R rating, but I don't think it's ASTM verified, so whether it's a made-up figure or not, I don't know, but we will see. I'll, uh, I'll let you know when I get it. I'm not sure if you can hear that, but it's just started to rain. Um, it's about seven o'clock and there was forecast for not only 50 mile an hour winds, but also thunder and lightning. And I'm now suddenly thinking, I can't remember if I've seen sealed this tent. Not good. Right, well, it's half past eight. I'm going to put some dinner on. Um, sorry. Soba noodles. Love those. Um, wind has died down a little bit now. But there was a horrific thunder and lightning storm. It did predict it at around eight o'clock, but it kicked in at about seven. Uh, the rain was so hard, uh, you couldn't hear anything inside this tent. I couldn't hear myself shouting on the microphone. Um, it was battering, battering the tent. And then... I, I couldn't hear it, but I thought I felt the ground shaking, and then I realised it was thunder. And suddenly there was these massive flashes. I tried to get some picture of it. I'll show you now. Um, so I was just laying here in the dark with my uh, my phone on because it picks up light better than the uh, than the GoPro. Um, but yeah, there was loads of lightning and uh, lots of thunder. So let's calm down now. So um, I'm going to get some food on. Luckily, in this. Uh, 
vestibule, hang on, get some light down here. Um, this does have a massive vestibule, it really is big, um, because it's got two points of pin out. Um, yeah, you've got a really square, because normally you, you'd get one in the centre for a vestibule, so it'll cut across there, and then obviously it'll cut from there to that corner, so you'd only have this little triangle. Um, but this is is absolutely vast. I mean, you can see my my boots there. There's space for another pair of boots there. I've got my table. You can't see my table because obviously it's camouflaged. Um, rubbish bag, space, space. Absolutely tons. And you've got two of these as well. So my rucksack and bits and pieces in the other vestibule. So yeah, pretty impressive. Um, it has held up extremely well. I'll give you a full verdict in the morning, um, but I am I'm pretty surprised. I've been out and had a walk around, checked my pegs. They've been fine. Um, none of the pegs have come out, and none of the tent connection parts have come off of it. And it has taken an absolute hammering. I mean, serious battering, I thought. I had visions of me packing up in the middle of the night with a flattened tent with broken poles around me. So the design of this with the additional hook that goes around the cross poles and through the through the end vent, which is what you aim the wind at, and I'm, admittedly I'm slightly off angle here, so the wind is hitting partially this side, so it's pushing that in a, that vestibule in a bit. Um, but with that and the um, trekking poles pushed up against the, um, the actual tent poles, it's solid. Absolutely solid. I'm really impressed. Cheers. See, I'm very impressed with the uh, the vestibule on this. It's um, sorry, um, tons of space to cook in. I'm using my alcohol stove, so I've got my um, X boil windshield and pot stand with the um, Descati's stove. And yeah, it took a little while to boil it using meths, but uh, I'm happy with that. I'm quite chilled sitting here, catching up on uh, social media while it's boiling my water. But yeah, there's loads of space and it's um, it's just a nice, it's nice to have a vestibule that size to work in. It's tons of space. Quite impressed. And in case you're wondering, I have got the uh, top vent open. So again, for a cheap tent, this has got a two-way zip on it. Which you don't tend to get on many tents of this sort of price range. It's more up to your... Uh, your Hillybergs and more expensive tents to get a sort of a feature. I don't understand how this flies in here with this wind. How the hell do they manage to fly and accurately get inside a tent? So my food is on. I know I keep banging on about these soba noodles, but um, if you like quick and easy food that is really tasty, you cannot beat these. They are so much better than any other sort of freeze-dried pot noodle type food that I've had. They're really tasty, quite filling. You get a massive cup load. Flies, seriously, how'd you get in here? Um, yeah, I recommend them. They're like, I think they're 90p a pot, something like that, nothing expensive. Mm. It's good. I'm gonna chow down on this. Finish my Stella. Second cut. Wind's died down quite a bit now. Um, it's forecast. Oh, I just squashed the fly. Caught it in my hand and it's exploded. Nice. What a cool. Good thing. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's forecast to be on average about 20, 25 throughout the night. So it's nowhere near as much as it was earlier on. And hopefully a clear morning, but I doubt it somehow. But yeah, at least it should be a bit quieter and hopefully I'll be able to get some sleep. Famous last words. 
Right, it's uh, nearly 11 o'clock. The wind has died right down now. It's nice and calm, so fingers crossed, get a decent night's sleep. If nothing else happens, then I will see you guys in the morning. I doubt you can hear that. This is really weird. It's 11 o'clock at night. I'm on a tour on Dartmoor, in the middle of nowhere. And I can hear what sounds like Arabic prayers. Uh, you see them when they start calling out in the morning. It's <laughs> really weird. Literally, it's just someone going, ah, 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 ah. Very odd. I don't know if the mic's picking it up, but turn your volume right up and you might be able to hear it. Now lots of whooping and shouting. Some odd party going on. Good morning. Um, didn't sleep that well last night. Um, not because of the weather, just just me. Um, yeah, the rain stopped. Um, there was thunder and lightning last night, so the tent has got obviously absolutely soaked through and it survived perfectly well. Inside here is bone dry. There has been no condensation inside whatsoever. I've had the vents up, sort of uh, about there, just to give a little bit of air through. And other than that, this is a completely solid inner, so no no um, condensation whatsoever inside. The fly sheet is wet on the inside because the uh, obviously with the rain coming down and then the, the wind stopped, I was hoping the wind would continue through the night because at least that way then it would, uh, it would keep it all dry, but no condensation. But uh, yeah, it's wet on the inside of the fly. Uh, but the tent has survived. Now... <sighs> This tent isn't perfect. Um, there are a few annoying things about it, and I'll go over those. But um, for it to put up with what it did last night, I am massively impressed with it. It, it, it got an absolute beast in, and it took it. And it didn't budge. The straps didn't come loose on the sides, uh, on the pegs. The pegs didn't pull out, and well, I used my uh, Eastern Nano pegs and also my... Um, three FU ones from Melanchthon. Um, it's so, as soon as these poles went in, because the, the weak point was where, obviously, I had the inner up and then put the poles on um, and connected the inner to the poles. That was where it started to bend and the poles were starting to drop down. Now, a couple of people commented uh, after I did the initial review on this tent, saying that, well, yeah, it's fine having these poles here to hold the um, checking poles, to hold the tent poles up in the really high wind, but it's a fabric that's going to let it down and that's going to rip because it's not going to be strong enough. There is not a single bit of damage on this tent. And it was battered for about four hours. That was four hours of constant hammering of 50 mile an hour winds. Um, so, yeah, I'm impressed. There's some annoying things, and I'll come on to those later. First, I'm going to make a coffee, because I need one. So a couple of things I don't like about this tent. Um, there's enough room for me to sit up in here. You know, I'm sitting on a pad, and um, I've got a headroom. My head's not touching the, the ceiling. If I push upwards, then it does, but I don't sit like that. Um, the lack of a lantern hook, obviously I've had to use a carabiner there, um, is a bit annoying. Uh, the, the difficulty I find with this tent is getting in and out of it. Now, obviously I'm six foot four, so uh, most tents are a bit of a struggle, so I've got to try and contort my way out of it. But having one centre zip, and also <laughs> these toggles are really tiny. They're, you can just about get them around it. If, if I was keeping this tent, I'd put some elastic on there 
just to make it a bit easier. Um, but obviously it goes up to a point here. And when I get out, my head hits here, and then my head hits here, and I catch my shoulders on this. So I find that I have to reverse out to get out of the tent without getting covered in condensation or catching it. That's a bit annoying, but it's a bit of a me thing, so probably won't affect you. Um, and I say, if I was keeping this tent, because although it is a very good tent, uh, and works extremely well, obviously, in bad weather, as proven last night, um, there's going to be another addition to my arsenal, so uh, I won't be needing this tent. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this tent away uh, on my 10,000 subscriber uh, giveaway. So when I hit 10k, this will be part of the package that I'll do a giveaway on. So one of you lucky guys might be able to win it. So my final verdict on the uh, not strong breeze tent. It certainly lives up to its name. Um, those winds last night, it took it absolutely no problem at all. So if you do fancy getting one of these, you want to buy one, I'll put a link in the description below. Um, it is an affiliate link, so I will earn a bit of commission out of it, but it doesn't cost you any more, and you can only get them ready from one place anyway. So there you go. Right, it's me all packed up now. That was my dry, slopey, bumpy, pitch last night. Um, I'm going to head on back down to the car now, so thanks everyone for watching the video, hope you enjoyed it, I hope you found it useful, and I'll see you all in the next one.